In this video, we solve problem number four from quiz number five from the fall 2020 semester. In this problem, we're asked to find the general solution of a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. Notice that the differential equation is Cauchy-Euler because uh, the power of x and the order of the derivative multiplying it are the same. So I've got an x cubed here and a y triple prime and an x squared here and a y double prime and x to the first and a first derivative and an x to the zero and a zeroth derivative, the original function. Um, so this is a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. It happens to be a homogeneous equation. So we're going to start by letting y equal x to the m for some unknown value of m to be determined by us. Since it's a third order equation, we'll compute three derivatives. The first derivative, according to the power rule, is m times x to the one less power. The second derivative comes from bringing that constant down and then you use the power rule again. So you bring the power down and you multiply by x to the one less power. And if you distribute that in, you get this. And then for the third derivative, you bring the constant down and then you bring the power down and multiply by x to the one less power. We're just applying the power rule three times. And if you distribute here, first times first is m cubed, outer times outer is minus 2m squared, inner times inner is another minus m squared, and last times last is positive 2m. So this becomes m cubed minus 3m squared plus 2m. I guess I shouldn't say it becomes that, it, it just is that, it's just in a different form. Okay, so we computed the first, second, and third derivatives, and then we're going to substitute those into the differential equation, and then simplify to solve for m. So we've got 2x cubed times y triple prime, which is this. Don't forget your parentheses. Plus 19x squared times y double prime, which is that. Plus 39x times y prime, which is that. Plus nine times y, which is x to the m. And we set that equal to zero. Okay, now from here, notice that you've got an x cubed and an x to the m minus three. If you add those together, or if you multiply those together, you would add the exponents and that would give you an x to the m. The same thing happens here. You've got an x squared times x to the m minus two. When you add the exponents, you're gonna have an x to the m. And the same thing happens here and here. That's a consequence of the fact that, that this was a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. So we can factor out the x to the m, and then we'll see a polynomial in m over here. So we have two times this polynomial. I'll distribute that two now. And then we've got 19 times that polynomial. And then we have 39 m from there, and then just a nine from there. And that's equal to zero. Now, this product will equal zero if this factor is zero or this factor is zero. Now, this factor is zero if x is equal to zero. But remember, we want a solution to the differential equation. We don't want a value of x that would cause the different, this equation to be zero. Um, we know that this will be zero when x is equal to zero, but we want a function, not, not a value of an independent variable. Um, so, even though we have this times this equals zero, which implies that either x equals zero or this polynomial equals zero, we want to say, well, we're not interested in that. Um, we're not interested in the trivial solution here. And we're not interested in the value of our solution at a single point. We want a function that's differentiable and we want it to be well-defined over an interval of values. Um, so, this is what we're going to say. If this times this equals zero, that means the polynomial must be zero because we want this to work for an interval of values, not just x equals zero. Okay, so let's simplify this. Got our 
2m cubed term there. And now I want to group the m squared terms. I've got a 19m squared and a minus 6m squared. So that's 13m squared. And then we want to group the m terms. Negative 19m plus 39m is 20m. 20m plus 4m is 24m. And then we're adding a 9 over there. OK, that's not at all obvious how that factors. So I'm going to use possible rational roots to find the values of m that cause that equation to be um, equal to 0, or cause that function to equal 0. This is the characteristic equation of this Cauchy-Euler differential equation. So I'll use possible rational roots again. Do that a lot on these problems. So I'm looking for roots of a polynomial equation. The possible rational roots consist of values on this list. We want to take factors of the constant term and divide by factors of the leading coefficient. In our case, the constant is 9 and the leading coefficient is 2. So we're taking the factors of 9, which are plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 9 and plus and minus 3. And we're dividing by the factors of 2, so plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 2. Now, dividing these by 1 doesn't do anything for us, so we'll just get 1 uh, 3 and 9 and negative 1, negative 3 and negative 9. It doesn't um, change the values at all. But then we want to take these three values and divide each of them by plus and minus 2. So we'll get 1 half, 3 halves, and 9 halves, and then the opposite of that. So negative 1 half, negative 3 halves, and negative 9 halves. We do have quite a long list of possible rational roots this time. Um, we've got six from here and then six more from there, so we've got 12, but at least we don't have infinitely many possible rational roots before. Before this, if we were thinking what values of m could satisfy that, we, we might try anything. Um, but now we know that if we're looking for a rational root, it has to be on this list. Okay, so let's pick a value of m that we think will work. Notice that the coefficients of m here are all positive. So if I pick a positive value for m, I'm not going to get zero. So that rules out these guys and these guys. And you say, okay, what about m equals negative one? I'm just gonna try it. Let's see. Maybe it doesn't work. I hope it works, but maybe it doesn't. So we'll do two times negative one cubed plus 13 times negative one squared plus 24 times negative one plus nine. And the question is, is it equal to zero? I hope so. It's gonna be a negative two plus 13 minus 24 plus nine. So this is um, negative two plus 13 is 11. And then I've got 11 minus 24 plus nine. Um, so I'll have 11 uh, plus nine is 20 minus 24 is negative four. So it's not zero. So m equals negative one is not a root. Hmm. Okay, what else could we try? I guess we could try negative three next. So I have two times negative three cubed plus 13 times negative three squared plus 24 times negative three plus nine. And so that's 20 or two times negative 27 which is negative 54. And then I've got 13 times nine. So that's uh, 90 plus 27, 117. Over here, we've got minus uh, 72. And then we're adding nine to that. And if we do the arithmetic, um, negative 72 minus 54 is uh, negative 126. And then if I add 117 and 9, I get positive 126. That's great. We get a zero. Awesome. So that means that m equals negative 3 is a root. 
And if m equals negative three is a root, that means m plus three is a factor. That is just a property of polynomial functions. It's how they work. So our cubic polynomial in m, that characteristic equation has m plus three as a factor. So that means our 2m cubed plus 13m squared plus 24m plus 9 is equal to m plus 3 times some other polynomial function in m. Now to find that polynomial function, we have to take this one and divide by that one. So you could think of Q as standing for quotient. Q is going to be the quotient of the polynomial in M that we started with and that linear factor that we just found because of the root. Okay, in order to do this, we'll do use synthetic division. So we set the divisor equal to zero and solve for M, we get negative three. It's the same as the value of the root. We list the coefficients of this polynomial over here. Bring that leading coefficient down, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. All right, great. So we know that this third degree polynomial divided by this linear polynomial is a quadratic polynomial. And these are the coefficients of that quadratic polynomial. So Q is equal to 2m squared plus 7m plus 3. So our cubic polynomial is m plus 3 times that. It's our characteristic equation. And if you're saying to yourself now, oh, how do I factor that? You could use possible rational roots again on this if you wanted to. You could say, well, what values of m would cause this to be zero? You can also use the quadratic formula. Um, what I would recommend is just trying to factor, because it's a quadratic. We know the first, uh, first times first has to be 2m squared. So I'll put a 2m here and an m here. And I need outer times outer plus inner times inner to be 7m when last times last is a three. So in order to get a three, if I've got integers here, um, I need a one and a three. So the question is, is this a one and this is three or is this a three and this a one? I think this is gonna be the three and this is going to be the one. And since this is positive, both of these are positive. One times three is three. Now the question is, is outer times outer plus inner times inner equal to seven M? Outer times outer is 6m, inner times inner is 1m, 6m plus 1m is 7m, so that works. Okay, so you've got this times this times this equals zero, which means either the first factor is zero, which means m equals negative three, or the second factor is zero, which means m equals negative one half, or the third factor is zero. Oh, there's another m equals negative three. I didn't realize that at the time when I was just doing this. So I guess I should say this is M1 and M2 are both equal to negative three. That's a repeated root and this is a distinct root. So let's rewrite that this way. M plus three squared times two M plus one equals zero. So M1 and M2 are both equal to negative three and M3 is equal to negative one half. So the solutions that go with that are these. Now remember, this was a Cauchy-Euler equation, not a constant coefficient equation. So the Cauchy-Euler, the form of the solution is x to the m. So this is y1 equals x to the negative 3. And y2 can't be x to the negative 3 as well. We've got to multiply by a little something extra in order to find a linearly independent solution. If we use reduction of order, we could show that the um, function that we need to multiply by here is natural log of x. And then over here, we've got x to the negative one half. Okay. So those are our solutions. And the general solution then must be y c1y1 plus c2y2 plus c3y3 
which is C1 over X cubed plus C2, natural log of X over X cubed plus C3 over the square root of X. And I think that's gonna work um, for all X not equal to zero. And also X has to be positive because of that square root. Um, so the interval of existence, the maximal inter interval of existence is zero to infinity. Okay, we didn't quite go over all the steps in the method um, explicitly, but this is what we did. We said, let y equal x to the n, the third order differential equation, take the derivative three times, substitute, simplify, you get your characteristic equation. If this factor is easily, factor it. If it doesn't, start with possible rational roots. So then we listed the possible rational roots of the polynomial equation. And then you try values of m until you find one that is a root. And remember what a root is. A root of a polynomial is just a value of your variable that would cause that polynomial to be zero. So you just plug in this m value to the polynomial and you see if you get zero. If you do, that's a root. And then we said that if you have this root, then the corresponding factor is m minus the value of the root. So that's m minus a negative three, which is m plus three. If this is a root, then that's a factor of the polynomial. And then you need to um, divide out the factor. And that gave us this using synthetic division. And then we want to factor the characteristic equation completely. Or if you wanted to, you don't have to factor it completely. Instead, you could just set this equal to zero and solve for m using the quadratic formula. That would be fine. The goal is just to find m1, m2, and m3. Now be careful, don't make the mistake that I almost made. I didn't look at this very closely and I just started thinking of these as distinct real roots. Thought I don't actually have distinct real roots. That m plus three is a factor that appears twice. So I've got a repeated real root. So that led to these two solutions and this solution. And then we wrote down the corresponding general solution. Y equals C1Y1 plus C2Y2 plus C3Y3. And then we stated an interval of existence. <laughs>